In 2013, the International Olympic Committee, IOC, voted wrestling out of the Olympics. So a lot of folks know about this, the absurdity of it, and so on. But in a big picture, you can step back now, it's five years later. What did you learn from that experience? Well, first of all, did it surprise me? <laughs> yeah. But did it really surprise me? No. You got to run, you got to have people running the organization that are top notch. If you take anything for granted and you're not the person of authority, somebody can kick you out. Mm -hmm. And even though we had a lot of authority because we're wrestling, we're the one of the first sports in the Olympics ever, and that we uh, think that. You know, we're in 180 some countries, and uh, some of the number one countries in the world that are politically strong have the sport. Mm -hmm. You know, we thought we were okay, but then you got to look and see who's running the IOC. The IOC, the International Olympic Committee. Yeah. And then you got to see that in wrestling, we don't have anybody in there. I mean, that shocked me. We've never had anybody on the IOC yeah. from wrestling. Yeah. You know why? Because we didn't have to. But yes, that's wrong. You have to. And if you don't have somebody looking out for you right within the structure, then it's pretty easy to people to turn their head. Yeah. But all it took was the statement, you guys are kicked out of the Olympics. You guys are done. <laughs> Everybody came together. And then, up. Well, yeah, I mean, it's the first time in ever in history that probably all this comp competitive people mm -hmm. that were working for their own agenda turned that agenda to the sport. So, and that so that made a big difference, and we got a lot done. In fact, in America, there was several people that were really – out there that we didn't know about yeah. until this point in time. And when they came aboard, now they're still aboard. That doesn't mean we're doing everything perfect because just because we got voted back in before we even got kicked out, really, that doesn't mean we're by any means safe. Mm -hmm. We have to do some of the things that I'm talking about or the, some of the things that we didn't do before. We can't fall right back into the same mess. Yes, And so our leadership got changed and it's better, but it's got to stay better. But there are things that we could still be doing to make sure that we don't have situations like this happen. I'll tell you, when I first learned about it, I was like, I broke down and wept. Yeah. Again, it's like every once in a while I'll break down and, and, and cry about my sister Yeah. or I'll break down and, I don't know if I cry about losing the Owings, but I probably get more determined. Yeah. But that's kind of, uh, you have to go back and, and, and think about those moments when you heard, when I heard that moment and I, I said, I, it just overcame me. It was like four o'clock, four foot 30 in the morning when I heard about it. And uh, my wife had been up, been up looking at the internet and she, she woke me up and I thought she was joking. But I jumped out of bed really quick when she said that. I knew she was serious. And I started making phone calls right then to find out if it was true. And when I found out it was true, you know, it was just like devastating, you know. And, and it was one of these things that it's a nightmare. And, but you don't let it happen again. It's, it's that simple. Yeah. And you keep getting stronger. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, if people haven't read, they should read The Loss of Dan Gable by Ray Thompson, the ESPN article that kind of, in this very beautiful poetic way, ties together uh, all the losses of Dan Gable, the losing your sister, losing to Larry Owings, losing wrestling from the Olympics, all of these tragedies of various forms.